this is Amy. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I paint a rock. Now this is a freestanding rock. If you're looking at it like this, when I sit it up, it'll actually sit up by itself. So this is kind of a cute little piece that you could sit on a shelf or um, have as part of your home decor and actually put it on display in a setting where you would put, you know, pictures and maybe painted glass, that type of thing, you know, where you can actually see the word, look at it, enjoy it. It is a little bit of a bigger stone. Um, I went ahead and I wrote the word peace on it. I use this, I guess it's, up, it's come off, but like a white carbon pencil so that I can see. I tried to do it with the darker one and it didn't work very well. Anyways, I'm going to be using on this design a number four A Magic round brush and two of the A Magic flat brushes. One's a zero and one is, uh, I'm not sure here. Oh, goodness. Unless I have so much paint on, I really can't tell. Probably, I'm going to say maybe a four or a six. So I can't really, can't really tell. I'm sorry. Then I have my long bristled fine liner brush which is actually a fingernail brush and then I'm going to be using a bent round to actually do the painting of the wording. Um, that I'm not going to actually probably do on screen but I wanted to show you that I used the pencil. There's a lot of things you can do. You can print something out from your computer, go on the back of the, of the paper with like a carbon pencil or such and then put it on your item and, and trace it if you want to do like a fancier a fancier writing. Um, I just did it freehand so anyways. And then I'm going to use a dotting stylus. Paint I'm using today is all folk art as normal. I am using school bus yellow, wicker white, and it is a mixture of enamels and multi-surface. Uh, no I'm not using this one, sorry. Thicket, Forest Moss, which is one of my favorite greens, uh, Red Violet, a little bit of purple lilac, probably not too much, but just maybe a touch, and Lavender. Oh, wait a minute, I'm not using Lavender. I'm sorry, I'm not using the Lavender. It's the I had some of these. I was going to use it, but I decided not to. I'm using the red velvet and the purple lilac. Apologize for that. Get stuff sit, sit up, sitting stuff out here to work on, and while I decide what I'm going to actually use, and then I forget to put it back so that it's not in the way. Okay, so basically, just stuck my finger in the paint. I am using the round brush. I am trying to show you. What I'm doing here. So I'll stick the round brush into my white, and that's the wicker white. Just going to tip it into the paints as I'm using them and going back and forth. If I get too much paint, I'm going to wipe it off with the uh, paper towels that I have and just do a quick little design. I'm not going to keep showing you that because I need to, uh, I don't have the space to keep showing, showing it. So, I'm just showing you right now as I'm doing it. And then I'll just you know, do a couple little strokes beside each other. You can leave the, the center open a little bit if you wish as you're creating. But I'm kind of just rotating the colors and just coming in and doing two strokes right next to each other as I'm creating this, this floral design. put like a tad of this in there like that but very simple if you're new to my channel make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell before you leave give me a big thumbs up if you like this video just so that you know I like to try to reiterate this when I am doing my videos my channel the purpose of it is to provide 
easy designs that anybody can paint. Now, I just like to remind people that because my designs are not typically real difficult. And I'm sure some people probably look at them and say, oh my goodness, this is so easy. Well, that's fine. That's what my intention is. I just think that in a stressful world, art therapy, whether you're drawing or you're painting, can be such a great way to relieve stress. And maybe even give you a focal point have some friends over, get out the your paints, your markers, whatnot, and be creative together. I used to have a group of friends that we did that. And that was so much fun. I mean we just looked forward to it every week, gathering and creating. And if you didn't feel like it that day, because we'd meet at a uh, shop where we actually had to pay to do it because we were doing mosaics we would just sit there and and just kind of laugh and have a good time and it was just such a great stress reliever it really really was I miss I miss doing that but the shop closed it's no longer there but you don't have to gather at a location you can gather at somebody's home even. Again, these are just quick little strokes with the round brush. My designs, when I'm creating them, I do do them on paper first. Again, I try to keep them simple because I want it to be something that you're not afraid to give it a try. But I also you know, try to minimize the amount of paint and stuff or the brand. You know, I use the folk art paints which are, right now, some may be a little difficult to get with the uh, virus and all, with a lot of the places having shut down or they can't get, apparently Plaid is not able to get some of the products that they need in order to create their, their paint colors, which is unfortunate, but I know that's not uncommon right now with different, different things. You know, like wood and stuff like that's kind of hard to come by. Anyways, you you know, use what you have on hand. You don't have to actually use what I do. I do put links down below that are affiliate links that if you want to purchase something or a product that I'm using or something similar, uh, feel free to look at those links down below. I do make just a little bit on them if you buy from that. Uh, but you'll see those links down below the video. Also, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those down below the video. I'd love to hear from you. As I say, even my favorite glass company filed bankruptcy which I really hate. They made the products here in Ohio where I'm from and they filed bankruptcy which I was sad to hear because they really have a great product. Say, but Welcome to 2020, right? do rocks you know with the wording on it if you want I haven't done a whole lot of those lately but I do have a few listed in my shop still I uh, have a couple other bigger stones that I wanted to do some writing on but I figured I will I want to make sure do it a little fancier I guess so I've been kind of just putting off doing it because I haven't wanted to use my cutting machine. Because you could actually use stencils too if you wanted.
I'm just trying to make sure I don't stick my finger in the paint. And on these I did leave a little bit of a center. Again, you can do it either way because I'm going to tap, use the dotting stylus and tap some centers in there here in a minute. Alright, so let's put that aside. Then I'm going to grab a little bit bigger brush. Again, I'm not really sure what size. I keep trying to look at it, but I'm not sure. I am going to double load on this. And I'll show you just really once here. You know, I just kind of put my paint in and then do the blending strokes. Try to get three quarters of the paint up the up three quarters of the way up the bristle if possible. And then I like to st stick it into another color. You could even stick it into the yellow if you want. That's up to you. Even if you get a little purple in there, that's kind of nice too. All right, so that's how I do it. I'm just showing you that right now because, again, the space that I have to work in, I'm finding is not a lot. So it's kind of hard to have my plate in here at the same time. Okay, so I'm just doing that quick little wiggle. Go here and do it again. I didn't get real good coverage here in the center. I want to make sure that I do. I'll just do a pull through it like that. If you want to do another one beside it, you surely can. I just want to make sure that I'm not going to be going down where it's sitting because I don't want to damage the design before it's dry. And if any of you watch my videos, you know that I often stick my fingers in them and have to fix the design, so trying very hard not to have to do that this time. And do a little pull, okay? Very simple. If you're new to painting, a good product to use is waxed paper. I know that may sound a little strange, but it's very affordable and it is kind of a slippery surface. So that if you're practicing your skills painting on, the rocks aren't quite so bad, but I do a lot of glass painting, but it helps you get used to like more of a slipperier surface. which I think, you know, using that product is a great way to get the feel for it. So I say you kind of have to train your, your hands. I'm trying to look here and see where I, I don't want to get into my piece. So I'll have to kind of angle it down a little bit like that. Oops, make sure I stay on the camera. Sorry if I'm floating off, I do apologize. I don't want to get down in there too far, I really don't. I'm just doing a little blending stroke here. Putting it down into that, so that's good. And then I'll just do my little pull down the center, just like that. And I like leaves a lot, so if I'm doing a lot of leaves and you don't really care for that look, feel free by all means to eliminate. You do not have to do what I do. Just keep in mind, my designs are more to give you an idea of what can be done, not what you have to do. Does that make sense? I mean, you don't obviously don't have to do anything, but I'm just saying that you don't have to follow exactly what I'm doing. It's just to give you uh, just some of, you know, ideas pretty much. 
I hope that makes sense. All right, I have one there. And you can make these leaves smaller if you feel like these leaves are too big. I just kind of wanted to make more of a statement with them. So that's why I'm making them a little larger. I like the coverage. And also, too, when I'm doing my leaves, I can vary them a little bit, meaning that, you know, I do different colors or different sh Like over here, I have the dark and the light. Dark, light, dark, light, dark. But then this one I did dark on both sides. You know, you can vary it that way if you want. Up to you. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is take my smaller my little zero flat brush I'm going to go into the forest moss okay if you can see that and into the white and I'm going to just create for one thing I'm going to create some little pulls from it just kind of going out from the design and again these can be fillers these can be just some added interest in the design meaning that you know I can even come down here just to kind of go over the wording or go underline the wording and I can do let me see here what I'm gonna do okay I can do some that are just like this where I'm just pulling let me put a little more white in there. Pulling to the stem like that. And keep in mind too, I'm doing this upside down. I can turn my piece around, obviously. Get a little more grain on here. A little more white. As I'm going. All right, and then I can also with this brush do my basic, just real easy one stroke leaves. And I like when I do this, and they're they go over another leaf or part of the flower and the reason I say that is that's just part of nature really when you do a floral arrangement or you have a garden anything like that you're going to have your items aren't just going to be separated and straight they're going to have some movement I'm trying to make that a little bit greener darker And they're not just going to be, like I said, straight and not overlapping or not touching other parts of your design. And I just like to do some wiggly kind of little branches that come, kind of come out from the design. Again, I'm trying very hard not to touch. I'm so afraid I'm going to touch something here. Alright, so let's go back to this one. I think over here I'm going to do another one where I'm just doing the poles. And I can turn this around. Again, you can tell I'm nervous about touching it. You can turn it around and do it like this, or you can you know, continue doing it upside down. doesn't matter. Just go in, pull towards. Depending on how you're doing it, if you're pulling towards or away, depends on a lot of times what the petals will look like. And you can add just some light to it. Make it a little thicker if you want. Uh, this one I think I'm going to just do my, my leaves, my regular leaves. Just some basic one-stroke leaves coming out from it.
And you could just do it one, one color and then go back over it with another color. Like do all the the green, I'm sorry, I think I got that off of there, off the screen, I apologize. But you could do it, all this green, the um, forest moss, and then go back over it with white just to kind of give it some more interest. You could also add some blue to this if you wanted. Here I come. I'm just going to do some of this crazy little, just the fun little spray, sprigs that I have coming out here. Or you can leave them off. Up to you. And you can also find those are kind of dry, that's okay. Am I getting that on there? I do apologize. I feel like I'm floating off the screen a lot today. But you see what I mean? Like I'm kind of overlapping that leaf, which if you had a flower arrangement, that's what you would be doing. You know, you're going to be kind of showing some movement here. And then we can come in here with the darker green. If you want to see the stems, you could do it with the white, more of the white showing. Or the forest moss. And then you can just, again, do your little sprigs. Or you can just leave this part off. Again, up to you. And just kind of wiggle it back and forth. Or you could even do it with brown to make it look like it's more like a twiggy kind of a branch that's coming out. All right. And then I'm going to come down here and finish off these bottom parts. Hold it. And depending on the pressure that you put on your brush, that also can determine how, what the shape of the... Back over it with another color, just do part of it, or and have more of it showing. Up to you. Again, if you get too much paint on your brush, just wipe it off on your paper towel. Come up over that leaf a little bit. So much fun. All right, let's just go ahead and get this finished up. And I think on this one, I'm just going to do some little pulls like this. It's almost as though I am underlining the word. I can come back and put a little bit of the darker green in, or more of the light. And you can go back over your stem too if you need to. Pretty easy though. I hope you like this. And then, then just to finish it off, I am going to do a few of these. Just come down. I'm overlapping. And I don't like to finish with even numbers. So I am going to do odd numbers. Just coming down a little bit. And come up in here a little bit. And 
And if you feel like, you know, just too solid of a color, just go ahead and uh, add some more to it. Add another shade of green or white. Whatever you feel you need to do. Alright, so before I finish with this design, I'm going to take my dotting stylus. And what I'm doing, I'm going to set this down. I am going to just go into the center and completely fill it with dots. It doesn't have to be perfect by any means. I mean, you, you can do a different center if you want. You don't have to do the dots. I just decided because I always use my Deerfoot stipplers that I would just do a different center. And I like the dots. I'm a dot person. Definitely. Alright, we're almost finished. I appreciate you hanging in with me on this. I hope this is something that you will give a try. You know, any of these surfaces that I'm using, you know, stones aren't that expensive. Or you can, you know, go look for them on your own. You do have to be careful though because you know, you're not, not every place you're actually allowed to take stones from. So make sure that it's something that you're actually allowed to do before you go someplace and start taking stones. I don't want you to get in trouble. Um, I'm lucky enough to have a place locally that I can purchase mine from. Uh, but, you know, if you're not, you can either purchase them online. I've gotten some from, uh, oh, um, Amazon. I've purchased some from, uh, Etsy, but it's cheaper for me, and I think I stuck my finger in my paint, cheaper for me to just do it uh, through the local, the local place that I have. Okay, so I'm using my fine liner, and I'm just going to come through and just put some little wiggly lines, and I'm using the two different colors, the forest moss, and that I just stick my liner in it and then I pull it out and just kind of turn it as I'm pulling it so that that kind of gets some of the paint off because you don't want it to be too thick or you're not going to get nice clean lines. But I kind of like, you know, just putting some lines through, you know, just wiggly little lines. You can do twirls or whatnot, it's, it's up to you. But it's just, you know, kind of giving it a little bit of movement, giving it a little bit of interest, as I call it. And just kind of going over your designs a little bit with some squiggly lines. And you don't have to do it with two different colors. I just do because I'm using all these different colors. So, why not, right? And again, I just kind of just move my brush around. If you're good at doing the, the more of the circle, squirrely, scrolly, not squirrely, I say squirrely, scrolly. You know, like where you just do like little circles. But either way works fine. And then there you go. The only thing I need to do still is to write in my word. And I'm going to go ahead and do that since I just got it painted. Alright, so I went ahead and did the, uh, the lettering. Um, just wanted to point out that once this dries, then I can go through and erase the marks that I have if, uh, if I need to do so. 
and those were marks that I put on in order to write out the words. But that those marks will come off very easily. Alright, I hope you like this video. If you do, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. Make sure if you're new to my channel that you will subscribe and hit that notification bell. And before you leave, make sure you share this on your social network with all your family and friends. I would greatly appreciate it. And until the next time, please stay safe and healthy. And you have a good one.